this prophecy rock actually is known as life plan or path that it does lay out of two paths that actually humanity has a choice on either a description given for the top path referred to as the materialistic path or the bottom one which is the right path to follow with certain predictions and, and, and um, previsions uh, tied into it but a uh, top path of materialism shows the people all unified but if we continue of our ways of destruction taking from the earth or even the world leaders press the buttons for all the nuclear atomic missile heads or the Ma South description given as the gourd full of ash destruction you know doing away with humanity and the earth and will be bits of particle dust in the endless space but if we follow the right path and continue in the right manner of our life path that has been laid out and if we do continue to the extent of the end days or judgment days the leader or savior that is to come will be leading the exodus of people into the next level or next world uh, so it just all depends on how humanity helps to control of understandings uh, uh, with our humanity spirit and the people of um, this whole world you know there'll be that continuance what do you think is the one factor that can get us living in balance with the earth again it's really not going to be one it's going to be multiple understandings and um, teachings are already out there and laid out it's just that we need to understand or accept and, and you know pick up though these teachings to have a little more thorough understanding which you know we did veer off of the wrong path so we can come back to those teachings so there is a uh, symbolical line connecting from the top materialistic path to the bottom to represent of convergence that people can change their ways and um, maybe for the betterment and the good you know of all humanity uh, so it's uh, a collective of so many uh, factors, but you know, we have to, I guess, you know, individually we are to be that change first to maybe show up change, you know, within or around the world or give that influence of change to, to all mankind. Specifically, like uh, uh, the symbology of, say, like that star symbol above the circle. Uh, that would be part of the subject we were talking, subject matter we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier about uh, originally it was to represent of a star. Um, actually I'm kind of jumping into different uh, spots of it but traditionally third world description all the people were good hearted a one heart people pure heart wanted to leave the third world because everybody was all in that chaos, corruptive state, mm -hmm. evil, evil negativity, mm -hmm. witches and sorcerers and so Maasau is the earth guardian or caretaker which is the keeper of the element of fire holding a torch he is actually holding the reed plant that was oh, successful yeah. to grow from the third world into the opening in the sky where the ancestors mentioned they heard foot, stamp, foot, foot stomping and it was made by Maasau the earth guardian or caretaker that was already placed on the fourth realm of the world to live his life out of loneliness so eventually the star symbol that did guide the ancestors to our Hopi ancestors of Hisatsinom to this area that we take in as our center of the universe was an understanding. So it was a two star combination that gave a vibrance and brilliance of starlight on that night. But ironically, it is also a confirmation on the other side of the world that Masao gave the description to Mahana that emerged on the fourth world, which is a description of. Um, uh, white brother, white person, mm. instructed Bahana to go as far east until the forehead touched the rising of the sun. And I would just state maybe that's a confirmation understanding what I do understand about the Hebrew culture people mm. or the Jewish people that in some aspects, uh, in the, I don't know when specifically, but I do understand in the description that they do have a circular disc with the symbol of the sun on there that they place on their forehead and that will be a confirmation of the instructions given by Masao that Bahana was to go as far east until his forehead touched the rising of the sun. And this star symbol actually would represent of the specific birth of the baby that the men giving the gifts were guided by that star. Yeah. So in other words that symbol of Star of David mm -hmm. would be a symbol to, of a sun in a, in a Hopi view, a Hopi eyes. 
and the ancestral teachings to give that description of that symbolical star is that each triangle element to comprise of that Star of David symbol represented of each star that was in that double star combination leading the men to give the gifts to the baby. So eventually at that conversion time period of, you know, um, you know, BC to AD, that was the descriptions given to lead the ancestors to this area at that same time that occurrence, or either that occurred on the east first, and then on the side of the earth, the ancestors were guided by that star, Hopi ancestors, to this particular location as our center of the universe. But then the elongation is that prediction of the Spanish Catholics to come, the people that were going to utilize this symbol as their religious symbol, representing of the crucifix of the um, Catholic religion. So in other words, when the Spanish did come down into this area from the east, fair-skinned or lighter-skinned, the Hopis from my village of Oraivi felt this was maybe the prophesied brother to return. So when the Spanish were meeting the Hopi villagers down at the foot of the Mesa, the Hopis laid out the welcoming cornmeal path, extended their hand out because the brother is to do a distinctive handshake with the brother, but instead the Spanish placed that gold coin in the palm of the hand, which the ancestors were dumbfounded about that, but later that was the realization that this was the item, which was the description of the yellow metal, or specifically the gold, that the Spanish were looking for, of uh, the understandings of that descriptions given by the stories mentioned that there were seven cities of gold, or Cibola, that they were looking for. So that was that understanding coming from the east. So we're still waiting for the Bahana to return from the east, but it's given another confirmation by Masao that Masao inscripted symbols on stone tablets that he gave to certain Hopi clans, and the uh, one corner portion of one tablet was given to Bahana to do the confirmation that at that actual crucial point of time of the end days or judgment day, Bahana is to return, bringing back that missing corner portion. So, you know, that would be that confirmation of that symbology of that individual you know the leader savior yeah. elder I, we don't know specifically and exactly what time date these occurrences would happen but when it is that time and actually again some certain church denominations that i guide they would just make reference to that that understandings in their teachings mentioning the return you know of the savior or you know jesus christ to come at that time point so there's a lot of again similarities and parallels you know found within a lot of the different religious uh, world cultures uh, teachings and then the circle represents of cycles but how did the ancestors know and understand this land or planet the earth you know was round but that's what it meant, uh, gave that description but cycles again maybe the not the global warming all in the chemicals but again the thousand year weather pattern of dry dry and drought conditions you know are occurring again here in the southwest mm -hmm. that did lead the ancestors to leave Chaco Canyon, Mesa Verde, all the ancestral sites throughout the southwest to relocate as the modern, present-day Hopi, Zuni, all the Pueblo cultures in New Mexico. We have oral histories that ties us with our ancestors throughout the southwest. So Hopi word descriptions, are name descriptions are given to all these sites in the southwest. And with that understanding, materialistic path, there were two paths to follow. People are so unified. Um, things that items that make life easier they're so used to um, but that's the description also given that uh, each individual here the first three represents of inventions advancements in inventions and technology for the third one meaning that Bahana was also Masa gave a description to the last individual that made it up which was one of the witches or sorcerers or turned as two hearted by Hopi that this witch or sorcerer would aid Bahana. He, Masao told the last one to go with Bahana. So generally, we just mentioned the white people created all these different inventions. Uh, so the witch or sorcerer used his magic to help of the creation of inventions. And so Masao gave that description for him to go with Bahana. Uh, but the last and third individual, the head is not centered. Oh, yeah. That's the individual that's in that contemplative state. Realization that this is not the path for him that he can convert back down to the right path. And then the last third individual actually represents a technology, as I mentioned, 
it would be a description that actually Stop. technology Stop. is current, currently overpowering Stop. us. Stop. This third one, that center. Oh. Yeah. Okay, go on. That the technology is overtaking or overpowering right. the people. So convergence, you know, realization, you can come back to the right path that has been laid out. That is what I feel we are currently at that point. People are going back to the organic foods, yes. all the traditional ancestral teachings, healing yes. methods, medicinal roots and plants, original teachings, how to live off the earth and the land, how to respect it, give us something back if you're taking, but corporations, companies are not following those teachings or basically individuals want to have maybe a little bit more thorough understanding of Native American teachings or indigenous teachings to understand and interact with the earth, you know, of how we've been doing it for all these, you know, thousands of years. So convergence, we are at that point, but circles that are depicted here, prophesizing of three world wars or fights. First one is fulfilled with a circle. There is a symbolical cane symbol in the middle of the first and second one. Cane symbol represents a chieftainship status, um, education or traditional knowledge carrying. So possibly the U.S. government after World War I studied of the, uh, the enemy's ways or the oriental teachings of China and Japan, or Japan specifically, to go into World War II. But again, the heating from Masao's message not to ever utilize this gourd full of ash. And that would have been that description given usage in World War II where America used the bombings uh, in Japan of Hiroshima and Nagasaki of, the, um, of those bombs. And then eventually the third one is not fulfilled, but again there is some symbologies on certain tablets that do confirm of maybe certain land countries or symbols on flags would be stirring up um, events. And currently what's happening with uh, uh, Syria, Turkey and Israel, yes, yes. and again Russia and China has an interest from each different, or was it China or North Korea, um, one of the different countries but the three countries I feel would be of that more maybe communist following communist Russia North Korea and communist China that would be part of a stirring up but eventually what's happening with these three countries Russia and China does have an interest in one of the other one countries of each each one so they're still part of that link of that understanding so eventually the elder or leader savior that is to come will come and lead the exodus of people into the maybe to the next world into the safe promised land you know we really don't know the ex exact accurate descriptions of you know where will we go be going or where the leader is going to take us but we do know it's going to be in a you know another better place but eventually a lot of people just feel spiritually that you know there's already that spiritual evol evolution evolving already of understandings um, but other people maybe feel that there has to you know basically that description to see it is to believe it so maybe the people want to see a physical occurrences whatever but eventually there's all kind of information out there that shares of descriptions from Hopi perspectives or prophecies about like the blue star sighting or you know when different prophecies were actually you know fulfilled you know a lot of the earlier times uh, so we just have to wait for these certain descriptions in, in the sky or on the earth again. But like I shared with you earlier, our teachings as well is similar with the understandings that our own human actions do have a recurrence action of what's happening all around us and throughout the world. So that understandings of all the climatic changes that have been occurring here in the Southwest, we talk about water is life, but with all the occurrences of flooding, tsunamis, water can take a life as well. Um, and all the, you know, uh, economic breakdowns maybe happening in some countries are already stirring up of that breakdown and even of the common people rebelling against their own governments and that is another uh, sign that again basically we are back at the point of third world description again corruption chaos and then yes we are noticing all the natural catastrophes all the weather patterns what are occurring volcanic eruptions floodings earthquakes tremors um, tornadoes hurricanes you know everything is all all evidently out there either mother earth's message is not fully understood or our ears are not fully open to hear of her message so what do you think is the general message of Pahana? i wouldn't have a very solid answer for that but it's just all again you know just starting with your individual self or i guess that self change in what context um could be either of you know changing of your ways um you know say your 
I don't know. It, it, it says inclusive of our whole. Your physical body change, your spiritual change, views on life, on the earth, environment, um, even even diet, I guess, is another sense because a lot of people are going to the more organics where maybe there's some uh, irritations coming from pesticides, chemicals that are in different certain fruits or vegetables. Uh, but really, I, myself, I don't have a, a really solid answer for that, but it's just... I guess that word of change and awareness, consciousness of, you, of yourself and who you are and your surroundings. What about like recycling and, and... That that would be another way, yes, changing even though, yeah, if we throw all our refuse and it's all going to a landfill, maybe if we had more of these recycling centers, you know, yeah, I can take more, most of my plastic bottles to the plastic recyclers and then aluminum cans to the aluminum recyclers. But yeah, that's another thing and people are getting into that awareness of recycling. Okay. Yeah. What are some of the ways that we live out of balance with the earth? Uh, it would be maybe taking of what we're not supposed to take or, you know, not too, I mean, we're maybe taking more than, than we should. Um, maybe just that our teachings of understanding says when we take up clay from the earth, we give up offerings back, uh, but paying homage and giving thanks that the earth, Mother Earth, is supplying you know, um, um, items to, to the artisans. Uh, but as a herbalist or medicinal herbalist and that as well, you know, yes, you do have to leave up offerings when you are taking uh, some of the medicinal plants and herbs, uh, giving, again, similar aspects of respect. Is there a certain prayer or ceremony that any non-Indian can do to, like, pray to the earth for balance? It's just in your own way of how you how you have been known to do your ways of prayer instilled in yourself. If you just do it in your own ways, there's no answer to the very true or right way to do it. You know, we have various cultures and religions. We all have our different ways and prayers and names to the higher power creator but it's all in the same understandings of giving thanks of creation and life and definitely giving us strength to continue on to move forward of who we are as you know humans uh, but no culture or religion is superior over the other we are all equal and we all emerge at the same place in the grand canyon hopi views is all human we are all equal we are all one because we all came from one emergence place. We are all in this one boat, one path of our life path leading to that, that end of the, the road that we have that has been laid out by the Creator. We all have our life path to follow. But yes, all the information, natural occurrences, uh, human actions, economic breakdowns, natural weather patterns, you know, is all accumulating to an understanding. That, you know, yes, you know, we are out of balance. Do you think the uh, cleansing is imminent? Um, it, in the past, it, 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 it occurs and, you know, we've gone through it. Our ancestors still talk about it. So I guess in a way there is a time that I guess cleansing will occur, you know, at any cycles. So I guess, you know, with the end of certain cycles, purifications or that term of cleansing uh, will occur. Um, I'm not too sure of how soon or, but you know, it is, you know, an understanding that we have to go through. Um, I don't know if it's not going to be our physical time, maybe our children's or our grandchildren's, even our great grandchildren's time, maybe. But you know, the, the purification will be coming, but we don't know, have a specific understanding of the actual occurrence of it happening, but it is coming.